What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to show you the difference between aux, buses, groups, effects, and VCA tracks inside of Cubase, so let's get right to it. So the first kind of track we're going to talk about is auxes and buses. So if I go to my mixer menu, let's go ahead and open up what we call an aux track. So in Cubase, we call it an effect track. And an effect track is pretty much where you put any of your time-based effects. Reverbs, choruses, flangers, anything like that. Let's just go ahead and call this a reverb because I have my altiverb set up. So I put the effect here. I could choose the configuration, whether I want it stereo, mono, 5.1, things like that if I wanted to come out only left or right or the stereo and then it creates the inside folder structure for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this track and what it's gonna do again is create what we call an aux track. Now what an aux track is, is where you hold your time-based effects and now the way we bust the signal into the aux track is gonna be by doing what we call a send. So if we go to the send, we open up the send here and we go here and we choose reverb we are now bussing the signal from this instrument one track to the reverb into an aux track. Now this signal is going to be affected by this reverb and we have reverb. So we need to make sure we turn this on. It's going to turn orange and you could click here to do pre or post fader mode. If you don't know what pre and post fader is, I'm going to go ahead and link that video now on the top right corner of this video. So go ahead and check that out. So here we have the pre and post fader mode, which will change colors between orange and, and blue. The orange is post fader mode and the blue one is pre fader mode. And all it's doing is now, depending on how much signal I send, it's going to bust this into an aux, which is this one right here. And it's going to give me reverb. The more I send, the more reverb I'll have. The less I send, the less signal is going to be pumped into this track, meaning the less reverb we're going to have. Again, you can also use this for choruses, flangers, or whatever other time-based effects that you'll be using for your production. So that's what an aux track is. You don't want to do reverb inside of an instrument track unless you're doing some kind of sound design work or you're specifically going for a particular sound. But usually we do it here so that way we can send multiple tracks to the same reverb and not have to load up three different instances of Altiverb. You just have one and have three or more tracks sent to this one aux. The next kind of track we're gonna talk about is a VCA. So let me go ahead and clear this up so that we can see a little bit better. So the next track is a VCA and I'm gonna go ahead and add a VCA here and I'm just gonna call this, let's say drum VCA. Now, the reason why I'm calling it a drum VCA is because you would most likely use VCAs when you have a group of instruments that you want to control with just one fader. So notice how we loaded this up and it does not have a fader because we still haven't linked anything into this VCA. Let me show you how to do that now. You're going to go ahead and highlight all five tracks. We're going to assume this is my drum tracks and we assume that we've mixed the drums and this is all the levels of kick, snare, hi-hat, overhead, toms, whatever. Now we're going to go ahead and right click on an empty space and click where it says link selected channels. You're going to highlight where it says use VCA fader and then you're going to do the drum VCA. You don't want to click new because we've already created one. So I'm going to hit drums and now when I click OK, you're going to see a fader comes out and it says link one. This means that these five faders are now linked to this one voltage control amplifier, which is what VCA stands for. And when I move this fader, watch what happens. The faders will move in relative volume of where they are or how I position them before I put it into a VCA. The reason why this works is because if I want to turn down this drums mix, I don't have to turn down each fader individually. I have one fader to control them all and the relative mix between them does not change. That's the advantage of using a VCA fader. You could do this with guitar tracks. So if you're mixing DI, which is direct input. So if you mic a guitar with the with their speakers, you put microphones on your cab or you do uh, the same thing for a bass and you have a DI input, you could put them in a VCA and that way you don't mess up the mix of these or the blend of these microphones 
and you can control them with one fader. So that's what a VCA does. Another way you can activate VCA, so you can unlink them by right clicking and select unlink. In this case, I'm gonna hit no there. But another way you can set up a VCA is if you have these tracks highlighted, you're gonna right click and then you just go here to where it says add VCA fader to selected channels. That way you skip a step and you don't have to press the link selected. You just add one. There it is, VCA link. Then you can call this, let's say, guitar VCA. Now these are all linked because these are all my guitar tracks. And again, same thing. I can move this fader and they all move in relative volume. That's how you use VCAs. Very simple, super effective. When you have multiple instances or multiple tracks of the same instrument, this could be a great way to group them and you could get a nice blend between them because now this becomes your main guitar or drums or bass volume fader. So let's go ahead and unlink these. And now let's talk about group tracks. A group track essentially is the same thing as an effect track, but they don't really work the same way or you shouldn't use them the same way. An effect track will ask you what effects you wanna to add to the track as soon as you click on it. But a group track doesn't. It actually just tells you configuration, outputs, folder setup. But this time I'm gonna call it a mix bus. The reason why you'd want to create a mix bus track with a group track is because now what this is, is this is going to be a mix of the entire music project that you have inside of your Cubase. So let's say I'm working on film and I have audio from the film. I have sound effects, you know, I have anything else that the film has and I have now my music track. In order for me to control, let's say, a hundred tracks of orchestral instruments, I group all of these into a mix bus using the group folder. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these. Make sure you hit shift and option to activate Q link. And then here you're going to do mix bus as a, as a routing option. This is going to grab all of the signal from all of my tracks into this mix bus. And now when I turn the volume down, doesn't matter what's happening on these faders or anything, since the outputs are being sent to the mix bus, everything will be turned down. This is great because if you're trying to balance dialogue with sound effects and music, you now have one fader controlling all of your instrument tracks and you don't have to go in and turn them all down one by one. Projects do get intensive sometimes, so you have over 100 tracks, you have over 500 tracks. In a film, you can easily have a count of 900 tracks or something like that. It's pretty crazy on the amount of tracks that you can have, but this one fader can help you control all of them. So that is how you use a group track. You can also group instruments like keyboards, kind of like you did with a VCA, but you could do like keyboard, drums, and you could do the same thing with the group track but you have a specific way of doing it with VCAs, so that's just a little bit more comfortable of doing it with VCAs rather than doing with group tracks. Group tracks are mainly for, again, music, dialogue, sound effects. You have one fader that can control all of that. VCAs are mainly for grouping instruments of the same kind, so guitar, bass, and you have multiple microphone positions for those. But again, you could use it as you see fit. You could use it to your workflow, so it really does not matter how you use them, as long as it benefits you in the workflow process. Let's go into the project window and let's check out what it's done here. If you remember, we selected create inside folder because now everything is inside of a folder called by their name. So effects tracks, so you have all of your effects in here. VCA tracks, so you have all of them inside this folder and group tracks, so you have all of them in here. So that's a very easy explanation on what all these tracks are and how do you use them. It's very simple and it's only designed to help you speed up your workflow. If you have any questions throughout the video, just drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you found the information of this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my brand new videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studio store. I have a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it. So go ahead and check that out. I'm also gonna leave a link to my Patreon down in the description. For little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel. As these videos do take time and effort to make, I would greatly appreciate the support. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.